Hi guys, welcome to the Fashion Scoop. Like I said before, this is your passport to the dynamic world of fashion. This podcast is brought to you by the India Today Group and hosted by me, Priyanka Kathuria. So join us and do not miss out. Well, today we have somebody who has been constantly serving looks on Instagram with his out of the box styling and shoots. He has been recognized as an emerging influencer for the year 2022-23 by Grazia and Cosmo India. His story is one of passion and perseverance. Please welcome Ego Sitlo. Hi, Ego. Hi. Oh my God. <laughs> Are you happy to be on the show? Yes, I am happy to be here. Thank you for inviting. No worries. So you look lovely. So, you know, I wish the viewer, viewers could see what you are wearing. So can you tell us about that? And maybe we'll put that in the edit later, like the details of your looks. All right. So I'll start from the earrings. So okay. the earrings is from Theater XYZ. Mm -hmm. And the necklace is from the same mm -hmm. brand. And this shirt is from So Good. And the uh, whole outfit is from Kakasha Sidra. And my shoes is also from Theater. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay. You know, so what really struck me while we were chatting earlier mm. is that you are somebody who has worked really hard to be where you are today and that too at such a young age. And you have, you know, despite all the adversities that you have faced. Uh, so, you know, can you tell me a little bit about what your journey has been like in the fashion industry till date? Okay, so I, my journey started... Uh, from borrowing clothes from my friends mm -hmm. because um, as I've mentioned that I'm coming from the n not so privileged background so mm -hmm. like we don't have them I don't have the money to like mm -hmm. afford stuff mm -hmm. so I started borrowing a dre what clothes from my friends and then started shooting um, taking pictures mm -hmm. and it, because like when uh, I was young like in the uh, family like you only get new outf uh, new uh, dresses or new outfit mm -hmm. once a year like mm. only christmas okay. christmas and new year okay. so there was a time that you have a new outfit mm -hmm. so during the whole year like you have to struggle of like okay. getting a new one or like there was a struggle so from there um i mean i've always wanted um to be in fashion so it was mm. a struggle like the whole join the whole yeah. childhood yeah and after that, uh, I always wanted to like leave my hometown. Hmm. So I had like 5,000, like not even 5,000. Mm -hmm. So um, I booked a train ticket with one of my friends and left for Delhi. Okay. And then because I left Delhi because I uh, there was a free, go uh, how do you say, hotel management training. Okay. So that, that uh, it was sponsored by the government of Manipur. Got it. So just for that, just to leave... The, um, my hometown so that I could pursue my dream. So I came out by train and I came to Delhi. Wow. And then um, I joined the free course. Uh, it's like three months. Mm -hmm. After that, I joined hotel. Okay. But then it was really tough to work there. Like you don't have time for yourself. Like it's all all the hours you have to spend on working. Hmm. So I thought it was, there was not working out for me. And then I switched to call center. Mm -hmm. And then I started working there. And whatever I earned, like I started investing on outfits. Like I started thrifting Sarojini. I like I keep thrifting. I keep making uh, content like mm. constant. And after that, at some point, I it was I thought that the what the content that I make or like the thrifting part is like a bit boring for me because I wanted something out, something different. I want to like mm. be apart from the rest. Like Got because it. just wearing putting on like a basic t-shirt and a pan it's like everybody else is doing yeah, so I wanted yeah. to do I wanted to do something different hmm. so I started to uh, how do you say explore uh. on the other side hmm. and I started um, how do you say if, even uh, while I was working call center I, I started taking leave okay um, I started sourcing outfits from designers and co started collaborating with the photographers mm -hmm. um, makeup artists and yeah, that's how I started my whole journey of like... Wow, that is really yeah. <laughs> that is really bold. So, you know, how did your family react to you leaving home like that? And were they happy about it? Did they tell you to come back? What was it like? 
Yeah, like they were like, um, you're making a mistake. Like mm-hmm. you have to complete your studies. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just I've just completed twelve and left hometown. Okay. So yeah, I have I have not done any further studies apart from that. Got it. So they're like, you should you should do your graduation. Like yeah, going yeah. there is gonna be a struggle for you. Like you'll you'll regret. They mm-hmm. have you have to come back or like try to complete at least. Mm-hmm. And they were like, yeah, they were always pressuring me that you always have a uh, financial issue or like whatever yeah, yeah. issue that you'll have. And then they were not supportive back there also because like we always like there's always been a quarreling every like every day oh, every morning something mm. like that mm. so i was not happy there i was like nobody understand like what is fashion mm. there right because mm. like not not most of them are like not um well educated enough to understand like what i want Got so it. that means like something new or like alienated mm. something mm. like that mm. so yeah so there's there's a lot of misunderstanding miscommunication yeah. between uh my parents and my my whole family members hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> see i think that's the case with most indian hmm. parents okay yeah. like they want you to complete your graduation yeah. and then post graduation and it never ends okay hmm. so i mean i don't think you're the only one facing that okay. i think there are so many more <laughs> I, like, yeah yeah I believe. don't worry about that hmm. yeah okay so so you know when you came to delhi hmm. and uh, you started working in the call center so i'm sure you must have like collected some money to start content creation and everything mm-hmm. so when you really started out how did the people react like were you getting any collaborations like especially because you're hailing from the northeast did hmm. you see any um, like biases against you or you know did you see that kind of a thing in the industry not that i remember of like if people like uh, reject me based on my based on my races from mm. or being from the northeast mm-hmm. um but i feel like i mean nobody f- maybe st- uh, like nobody said this straight to my face but i believe uh, because i have been get getting a lot of rejection mm. because i have been applying to a lot of uh, casting a lot of i have done a lot of audition but like okay i never got selected and, and mm. none of them okay. so i think so even though i don't tell me straight to my face but mm. i think i have faced a rejection based on where i come from god and got also it. i feel like uh, even the nordish people who are a part of the circles who mm-hmm. are, are part of the fashion mm-hmm. they also look after their own circles only so i feel like okay. i kind of feel left out mm-hmm. in one way because like in the past when i started out i like tried reaching them out few of them but they like, don't reply me okay. or like there's this ha- but this is on like support their own circles like they have they form a group Ah. and like nobody can enter their circles kind of like that so so you said that mm. you know you are a dreamer and you are really passionate about mm. what you do and uh, you you do not feel like quitting this so you know is there any advice do you have for people who are in the similar boat like you and who are thinking of quitting um, like being a content creator because of all these challenges that they are facing well um i myself has tried to quit like three four times okay because it was like uh, so much of uh, the energy was my energy was draining hmm. like all the amount whatever i earn is like i spend on my shoots like traveling like buying yeah. stuff like yeah. everything like it just goes away hmm. so at, at some point i was like because i had like when i was starting i was a bit new to this n- mm. new to this but i just want to do because of the dream like i was yeah. trying to just go go yeah. for it but yeah. then i can see that there's a lot of people who earn through content creation mm. but then i was not earning anything but then i kind of feel like this is not working out maybe i'm making a mistakes yeah. or like why am i doing this like if there i'm uh, if i'm not earning anything then what's the point of doing this mm. so like there was always i always question myself like why am i doing this like so i thought of giving up like maybe i quit for a month i quit for a mm. Mo- uh, like man or two yeah. but then i at, at some point i realized uh, like i kind of recall back like why did i start like mm. the reason why uh, if i start this and i should have like uh, even if it's difficult i think i should just go with it like in, i don't want so that i don't regret later so yeah. in, instead yeah. of like not regretting in later like at least you try at least i try got it so like yeah once you not give up even if uh, there's a lot of difficulties on the way Yeah so. I think that that's absolutely correct uh-huh. because like you know whenever you feel like quitting in mm-hmm. whatever you're doing not just in what you are doing but like in yeah. any industry that you are a part of I think it's important to remember why you started mm-hmm. if you are really passionate about it. Yeah. So yeah that is true. So you know uh, like what has your growth trajectory been like like you know from when you started and where you are today like you know what is the kind of 
earning or the livelihood or do people need to sort of have like a side job um is it necessary like do you have a side job uh, with content creation well i think side job is really necessary um okay. because like um, because in content creation or like mo- uh, anything like in terms of fashion um uh, it's not um how do you say the mo- the money flows is hmm. not so regular like okay. so in a month you get one two collab like you can survive hmm. one two month but the uh-huh. other month like you don't get anything okay so i i feel like one should have a side income or side job got it yeah. got it so so basically like the income is scanty like you know yeah. sometimes it comes sometimes it doesn't yeah. got it especially when you're just starting out yeah got it got definitely. it definitely like okay. uh, once you have a lot of followers or like you have your hmm. trending or popular maybe yeah. you can survive just by in uh, just by making content but huh. if you're a niche um in how do you say content creator who has yeah. a lesser than 10 or like who hmm. is who has not reached among of like 20 to 30 maybe mm-hmm. one should have a side income got it yeah. got it so okay like, like i'm asking you a fun question is mm-hmm. there any indian designer you want to collaborate with in the future like is there any favorite designer of yours you feel like collaborating with yeah i mean there is a f- mm. uh, few but okay. uh one like the top most is um rahul mishra okay he's Gaur- a, he's everybody's favorite yeah. apparently here yeah. <laughs> Yep. And Rahul Mishra, Gaurav Gupta, and mm. Amit Agrawal. Nice, yeah. nice. Even I love all all of oh. them. Yeah, <laughs> they're stunning. Yes. So in the previous episode, we spoke about how brands are facing a backlash because they are making a political statement. Mm-hmm. Uh, but even influencers like Kylie Jenner recently lost like one million followers. uh you know because she had posted something and then she had to take that story down. So you know. it does it affect your outlook uh, towards these influencers or or like celebrities or do you feel like it's okay and they have their own personal opinion and they are entitled to have their own opinion yeah i feel like they have i mean they should have their own opinion about that and i don't not want to comment on politics because okay. i don't want to get cancelled okay. <laughs> yeah you're not getting cancelled yeah. okay. <laughs> fine fine so so you know your uh, Uh, like the post that you put up mm. put up on Instagram and your shoots are like larger than life you know it's like really bold so uh, what really made you sort of start that kind of a thing like why did you uh, start doing such maximalist stuff like what was your inspiration behind that my inspiration would be um rejection okay because like I've seen a lot of models. I've seen a lot of people who has been all the campaigns. Who have been working with a lot of design. Who has been wearing a lot of cool outfits. Hmm. But I could. I do not have the. How do you say the, privilege to wear all those stuff. Okay. So I was like, how I was figuring out how to start doing that, and then I kind of figure out in the way. Hmm. So, my rejection taught me like how to. Like if I got rejected, if I, if I'm not getting the shoot, if I'm not the face of that, yeah, I can just do my own shoot. So like mm-hmm. I started how, I mean the reason why I started is because of the rejection, like because nobody was giving me. So I I was like I should be doing my own shoot. If nobody give me, I should be doing my own shoot. Hmm. And why I make it larger than life? Uh, it's because like I want people to know that I'm here, like hmm. that I am here, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. And then I, also I want it to be more. to uh, make it more international as well so got that it. i one day it's a dream for me to like go out outside and work there or like maybe get invitation somewhere so that's what that is my dream like to be known and to be recognized got it and uh, are there any icons who have really inspired you like or your style icons i'm not sure but like i'm i got inspired from a lot of artists like a lot of people but one would be especially like who inspired me is uh, doja cat okay. and the reason why i save my eyebrows is because of her like the day mm. when i saw her eyebrows like i would i she looks so good i was like okay i yeah. should also try it yeah. and then yeah i shave it because of that Oh, uh, nice, nice, nice. Okay, so when we talk about bold uh, fashion statements, are there any fashion moments or iconic looks from the past that you like really uh, love, like love, like you really loved? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, the one that stood out or like that um, stuck in my mind. Uh, that one moment, I think it's Doja Cat only, okay. where she went to the Couture Week. Uh, hmm. Well, she was. 
having that uh, how do you say? with the red look with the uh, 3000 yeah, yeah, yeah. Swarovski crystal yeah, look that she yeah, carried i yeah. thought that was really mind blowing i would say yeah. like i i really like that got it so, so would you replicate something like that soon on instagram yeah i mean i would want to but i feel like it will take a lot of time yeah. to do that so i'm not sure if anyone would be willing to got it, do got it. it. and <laughs> do you do you have a team or do you just do everything on your own or so do like, you hire freelancers mo- yeah i hire i'm not hire like i just like reach them out okay. well, i have this concept or i have this look do you want to collaborate with me hmm. you can hmm. just uh, like pick up your own like make up references and we can agree uh, together on the looks like like we got all it. collaborate like we all have put our minds and all together and so like we make it work got it got yeah. it uh, so you know you are wearing some really cool accessories today mm-hmm. so how do you think like the accessories do they play a role in making like a, a fashion statement yes i believe that the accessories like plays a lot of roles in making the outfit looks good like yeah. a simple outfit also can if uh, if you're wearing a simple outfit you can mm-hmm. just uh, make the outfit looks good by wearing a bold accessories or like a big choker or yeah, like a yeah how do you say structure earrings like you could just make mm. elevate the looks got it and what are some of your favorite brands to uh, I, get accessories from accessories like yeah. uh from india i would say art house yeah yeah art house and valian hmm hmm and tether the one i'm wearing right yeah, now yeah. and then i like misho okay but they have that uh the i'm not sure or uh, they have the body gold yeah, stuff going yeah, on. Yeah. I tried to source them and <laughs> it does not work out but I hope mm. soon mm. but yeah hopefully I, I like after this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now now they know <laughs> that you want it. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Okay, so so you know can maximalist fashion also be affordable because like a lot of people tend to think that like you know it must be all really expensive stuff. So like can is it affordable or not? to be honest it's not affordable okay yeah because um the craftsmanship on those looks are like um it they, i think the for the designers it takes a lot of time and the mm. amount that they have put on those looks are like mm. quite hefty amount so yeah. it's not practical for someone to think that it's I affordable affordable yeah got it got it and and when you carry these looks does mm. it empower you like how do you feel like you know while you're having that shoot or like when you uh are done with it and when you walk out like do you feel more empowered like how do you feel yeah i do feel empowered by wearing those looks like i can just channel the energy coming out from the looks like hmm. th- i would say yeah. that yeah. yeah got it got it okay so like our last segment is like a fun segment mm-hmm. it's called fashion this or that so i'm going to ask you a few questions and you have to choose one option cool okay okay so first question in the realm of experimental looks which one do you prefer lady gaga's dress from 2010 which is like the maid dress okay. that she carried or katy perry's 2019 chandelier dress by moschino i would choose lady gaga the maid dress okay yeah I, yeah i you know in mm-hmm. i don't know on instagram on one reel or interview i remember like you said that you're really influenced by lady gaga yeah yeah i'm influenced yeah. by lady gaga and harry well. styles yeah yeah, the, yeah. The, i mean the reason why i started started to shift my own uh, yeah. aesthetic is because of harry style like i've seen okay. him started uh, exploring the gen- gender fluid uh, yeah, looks so yeah, like yeah. he started wearing skirts Correct, i was like okay yeah. i should also start like i is yeah. one of them so yeah got it nice okay so next question which international singer has done a better job with their beauty brands according to you mm-hmm. selena gomez with rare beauty or rihanna's fenty beauty mm, i would i mean i love selena but i think mm. i would go with fenty because i think mm. she has a lot of in terms of uh, foundation shades i think yeah. she has all the foundation shades that yeah. scattering to all the also skin. also the uh-huh. shimmery stuff really looks, looks yeah, cool yeah the highlight yeah like have you like seen like those ads yeah like, always yeah. like what's shorts yeah. beauty reels yeah. or shorts yeah so yeah amazing yeah. okay so which bollywood celebrities wardrobe would you like to raid karan johar or ranveer singh oh I, i would say karan johar and why i feel like he's uh, also experimenting with all yeah. looks like i've seen him on all the interviews or like all the shows mm-hmm. or all the events he's always been wearing loud stuff like i think yeah. 
I would like. I mean, <laughs> I, I, so, so I basically yeah. you resonate with it. In yeah, I resonate nice. with this wardrobe. Nice, nice. Okay, so when it comes to absurd fashion trends, mm-hmm. which one are you willing to try? Oversized clown shoes or neon fur coat? Oversized clown shoes. Yeah, you know, like those toy type of a. Oh. Yeah. I would love that. I would love to try the clown shoes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay. What's your preferred layering option? A chic blazer or a cozy sweat? A chic blazer. Okay. Uh, so, you know, earlier I've seen that you have rocked colored hair. Like it was all oh, wow. pink and purple and everything. <laughs> okay. Yes. And now, and now for a while it's hmm. just black, black, black. So what do you prefer? Like would you want to uh, go back to your colored hair phase or this is fine for you? I mean, this is fine for me because hmm. if, if you carry color hair, like um, sometimes the looks that you try to carry yeah. does not work out and then it also ruins your hair and your scalp. Got so it. it's like uh, natural hair is better, I would say, because it just, you can just experiment, you can hmm. do every, anything you, you want with it. And it, yeah. I mean, all the looks good. Like, yeah. I mean, black black natural hair colors looks good with all the all the outfit. Great. Yeah. Okay. So the last question: What would be your preferred st- street fashion photography destination, New York or Paris? I think I would go with Paris. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ego, for uh, bringing your unique perspective uh, to the podcast. It mm-hmm. was a pleasure having you. And uh, to all the people who tuned in and were watching, keep an eye out for more such episodes where we bring a lot of fun and fashion all together in our podcast. So good. I'm really bad at goodbyes, like I told you in the <laughs> last episode. But because it's 2024, I shall try to be better. Uh, goodbye for now and until next time. So uh, also, if you have any feedback, uh, it would be great if you could email us on pods at the rate India today dot com. Or you can also reach out to us on 8588 Thank you so much. Bye.